Hello Options Trader, Steve Gans here and welcome to the weekend update. It is June 16th, 2024, Father's Day, so happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. I'm going to uh, take a look at our current open trades first and then we're going to look at the market over the past week or two and what it might look like for the coming week. So, I will say that our trades right now, I've had more challenging trades in the past few weeks with the big market whips than I've had in quite some time. And Apple is pretty indicative of that. I will be doing a complete run through on this Apple trade once this thing expires this coming weekend. I really don't know that there's much more I can do with that here. I did show in the trade circle a possible idea that someone could employ of doing a calendar on that. But right now, it's not something I'm going to personally pursue. This is one that I'm just going to take my lumps on. So again, I will be doing a complete review of this because I do think there are some things that could potentially be learned from that trade. Then we have the DJT no lose trade. Now, while this one appears to be up nicely, it will be a profitable trade, but it's not quite that profitable. I think that's showing that because of maybe a wide bid ask spread after hours here. But we'll see on Monday. Again, those uh, this particular symbol trades very oddly, and it's to our benefit when we can take advantage of that. So that's what I've done here. I just don't think it's quite that profitable, but it will be profitable. The SPX flat fly, this thing has gotten whipped around multiple times as well. Again, I'm going to do a review on this once this trade finally wraps up, but I do think there's possibilities to still work this one into some profitability. And likewise, with our rut trade, while it's balancing on the edge here, we'll look in a moment why I'm not too concerned about that just yet when we start looking at charts and doing a little bit of technical analysis. The Q's trade has played out quite well. Put on this vertical, market ran up, <clears throat> then added <clears throat> excuse me, a short call spread to it. And this is, of course, our wheel trade which is doing quite well. Again, we've only been in this about 13 days. The goal is to eventually someday maybe get assigned those shares in Fortnite. But in the meantime, we're just gonna continue to do the wheel process on that trade. So let's take a look at the markets themselves at this point. We'll start off by looking at SPY and we can see massive jump up and massive move here over the past few days. Uh, if you go back a couple weeks, this is from 517 up to a high of 545. So really big move in a week or two on this. And the up volume is pretty solid, which tells us that buyers are continuing to pile into this market. If we look at SPX, of course, that's going to look very similar, hitting all-time highs this last week. Slight little pull-off. Expecting it, if it were to pull back further, I would expect maybe a pullback to this 5370 range and then probably a move up higher yet. Or could just take off higher from here, but usually you'll get a gap fill. So sometime during this week, we may get a gap fill. Quick reminder, I think it's Wednesday is Juneteenth and our markets are closed. I, that's not gonna happen on Wednesday, but I do expect that we might get that gap fill here in SPX. Looking at VIX, volatility index, we are back really low in VIX. That means that options premiums that we get as option sellers are also going to be lower. So I carry a lighter load of premium, if you will, during these time periods. I trade smaller sizes, and when volatility gets higher, then I have the ability to come in and add two positions or create new positions when I'm getting a higher level of premium for those specific trades. So let's take a look at RUT. And on RUT, remember I said we were balancing on the edge here, and we are at an area that has largely been support in the past, right around this 2000 range. Of course, RUT has whipped all over too, from a low of 2005 up to just shy of 2100 here. So almost a 100 point move, 5% move overnight. That is not a normal RUT move. That was a huge whipsaw. And as you recall, in our specific trade, 
I was a little bit concerned about a breakdown here because we broke to newer lows on this day. I had a long call as part of that butterfly and I took it off late in this day. That's going to be a, a bad move that I am going to evaluate once this trade is over. But had I left that on, I would have been able to sell that long call for a big premium here on this day when we gapped up. And then that trade would have been in great shape as this sold back off. So that was a, I don't know if I want to call it a misstep, because we did break to new lows there, and I was thinking we actually even dipped below the 2000 mark, I believe, on that day. Yeah, we dipped down to 20, let's see here. No, we did not quite dip below 2000. So again, that, that was maybe a little misstep there on this particular trade. Of course, hindsight is always 2020. That's where our markets are at this point. Expectations on rut here, I think, again, we're at that kind of teeter-totter point, but I would expect rut to rally back up maybe here into this 2050 range. It is largely going sideways or actually trending slightly down here. But again, I expect that we might hold this area and then bounce back up from that. So at that point, I'll look to make any other adjustments that might be needed on that trade, but that's what we'll look for there. So I think that's it for right now, everyone. Thank you so much, and um, we'll see you in the community this week. Take care.